our crafty friends. I am Vicki Howell. Welcome to Ask Me Monday, episode number 96. It is so good to see you and be starting yet another week with you. Um, as always, we start with people coming on and letting us know how they were creative over the weekend, whether that means knitting or crochet or sewing or photography or poetry, whatever it is. If you've got a link, share it. If you can't share it while you're live, come back and share it because I will hunt those links down. I love seeing what you're making. Post pictures. The comment section of this video is your community, so please use it. If you are watching this later on YouTube, know that this is live at noon central time on Facebook, and it's very conversational. It's not just the straight up tutorial. Please look in the description section for what time the tutorial actually starts though, in case that is your jam. So my friends, this episode is brought to you by the wonderful company Knitter's Pride, if you are in North America, or Knit Pro, if you are elsewhere, they are a huge support um, to my projects and to Ask Me Monday for the next six months. So the needles and hooks that I use will all be provided by them, and I will include links to them in the blog post that I have already live on my website, and I will post here in a section in a second rather, um, with those supplies so that you can check them out yourself. So I see people starting to comment. Um, hello, Laura from North Carolina, Linda, uh, David Rose in Kansas, always Karen from Netherlands, so good to see you. Um, oh, Teresa from New Zealand. Is it tomorrow morning, I think there? Noah, great to see you. Um, Thank you for saying I look springy. I'm excited. I love this. Okay, so this is a top and it's totally related for those of you that are like, this is not a fashion um, vlog. So what are you talking about? Um, this particular blouse that I'm wearing, I got while I was at Craftcation and I love, love, love it. It was dyed. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see how beautifully dyed. It's hand dyed by a woman by the name of Anna Joyce. And for those of you that listen to uh, my podcast, Craftish, I interviewed her, I guess, last year. She's a, an amazing dyer um, and just a really incredible person. So I bought this there. It's hand dyed. I can feel her creativity just jumping off the fabric. Oh, apparently in New Zealand, it's 5 a.m. Man, that's some crafty dedication. So thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Um, so over the weekend, I did not do a ton of making. I prepped for today. Um, and I haven't even told you what we're doing today, but I'll tell you in a second. Um, but what I did do amongst, um, I was single parenting because my husband is out of town for, um, for a family obligation. I did get to cut out all of the pieces of a skirt. So speaking of guests, craftish guests, I, uh, another interview that I did quite some time ago was with Ray Hookstra from Made by Ray. And she has a skirt pattern that I really wanted to make. I'm a little... I'm a little angry with fashion right now. <laughs> I'm normally a pacifist, but it kind of makes me want to punch somebody when I see what's out right now because everything is like, I'm 5'3", I should preface that. Everything is maxi, doesn't work. Huge ruffles also doesn't work on a short person. Cutouts on the shoulders, not a fan. I feel like Donna Karen, Barbara Streisand. Those are the people that can wear sh shoulder cutouts. Um, and just lots of um, 90s print, like 90s colored floral prints. And I lived that the first time. So anyways, my point is, is I'm going to make, I'm going to try and make some stuff my dang self. So that is that. But also what I worked on this weekend is what we are going to be making today. Sachets. And because I know that I've got both of you here, both of you, not people, but both crafters here, I've got a knit version and a crochet version. So this entire month, we have been focusing on Ask Me Mondays on open work. And that's just because the weather's get season. So if you did not watch the past two episodes, you can go ahead and just, if you're watching on Facebook, you can go ahead and look at the playlist, same with YouTube, um, under Ask Me Mondays. You can also find them um, at vickihowell.com. But today, I thought it would be fun to I'll show you a new stitch for both, but also apply it to a project. So I made these little sachets. These are great for your lingerie drawer, should you have one, um, 
but oh, I mean, I guess everybody has an underwear drawer, but you know, a fancy lingerie drawer, or they're actually really great for your yarn stash. So it keeps your yarn smelling really fresh or delightful, depending on what you use to put inside of them. So they make, yes, Tara, that's correct. They make a great teacher's gift. They also make a nice Mother's Day little add-on. You can put it in if like if you did something else for, for your mom and you can put it in the package. It smells delicious. Or for your mama friends, just a little something to say like, we're in this together. And then you get to use, you know, leftovers of really you know, beautiful sock yarn that you might have, scraps, because it doesn't take much. It's also, I gave you the instructions on my website to make both the knit and crochet, and as I am talking, I'm going to paste that link into a comment right there. And let me see if I can pin it too. I did this once. Yay, I did it again. Okay, um, so I did put the exact instructions for these on there, but if you have swatches already, you can totally turn them into these sachets too. You'll just have to make either a double, a duplicate for the back or else just a plain stock in it. So we're going to do knit, crochet. I'm gonna show you how you make the insides and um, we're gonna to talk tools. So the first thing that I think, we're gonna do a little flipping back and forth today. I think I'm gonna get the stitches out of the way. So really all you need to know for both of these is kind of one stitch, the thing that makes the open stitch. So I'm going to start with Let's just start with the knit one. So I'm gonna flip the camera over. Please continue to tell me what you were working on over the weekend and post links and I will get situated. All right. That was not my smoothest transition. You saw my lights, but we're all friends here. Okay, so here's a closer look at the knit version. As you can see, um, I did a really lacy pattern. I think that it looks, and these are really springy colors. This yarn was gifted to me at, I think Midwest Craft Con, um, Fairy Girl yarn, sock yarn. I just think it's really fresh, springy colors. And then I chose a pop color to go underneath. You could use muslin, you could use whatever you would like. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So the front side is this lacy pattern. And for this one, I just made a plain stockinette stitch pattern. Again, the directions for this are on my website in that link I just pinned to the comment section at vickihowell.com. All right, so the only thing that you need to know, it's all straight stockinette, you can see there's stockinette bits alternated, is how to make these columns of eyelets that you'll notice don't really slant one way or the other. Although you see the strand slanting, you do not see the decrease, meaning that the eyelets are not going at an angle. They're pretty much vertical. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You do that by creating a double decrease with yarn overs. Okay, so I've just cast on the stitches. Uh, for this particular stitch pattern, you need multiples of six plus five. Again, I've put that on my website, or at least the number for the sachet I've put on my website. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to do the increase and then decrease that creates the eyelet pattern. Okay, so anytime that there's a lace and open work stitch you're in knitting, you're going to do a yarn over, which is just done like that. Now, if you're in the UK, a lot of times that is not written Y-O or yarn over, it's called Y-F, like yarn forward or Y-B, yarn backwards. Here. In North America, we tend to say yarn over. Okay, then we're going to slip the first stitch, and unless the pattern tells you otherwise, you're going to slip purlwise so that the stitch does not get twisted. Then we're going to knit two stitches together. That is only one stitch. We're going to knit two stitches together. Then, so now we've decreased one, then we're going to pull the stitch that we slipped over that knit two together. So now we've done a double decrease. Well, we've increased one over here with that yarn over, but we need to balance it out by increasing one more time. So then we're going to yarn over again. And then for this stitch pattern, it calls for you to then just knit three 
And I am using the Knitter's Pride Knit Pro Symphony Dreams needles right now. I might actually switch over to the Zings, which I also have because they're a little pointier for lace knitting, but I just like working with wooden needles a lot, so I tend to grab them whenever I can. Okay, I'm going to show you one more time how that lace pattern goes. All right, so we're going to slip the stitch purlwise, knit the next two stitches together, and I should have mentioned yet again that there is a yarn over there. I'm going to slip that stitch over the knit two together and then yarn over again and then I'll just continue as the stitch pattern calls for. And what that does is that creates these columns of eyelets. So you're going to follow the stitch pattern and you'll end up with a piece that looks like this. As you can see it will need to be blocked and we're going to talk about that in just a second. But while I have the camera facing this way, I'm going to move on and show you the crocheted version. All right, so this version is actually a stitch pattern that I used quite some time ago on a dishcloth that I really like. And this is a lovely bright coral, um, which just makes me happy. For this one, I, I just ended up making two of the exact same pieces instead of doing the, the straight. Um, stockinette on the back or I guess this would be single crochet on the back. I liked it. I have and I'll show it to you later but I have a little bit of a floral fabric underneath so it's a fun little peekaboo. All right this is a really easy um, open weave lacy stitch pattern that I think is really sweet. It would be great for a little girl's top or actually it would be great for any top but especially I think it would look so cute with a sock yarn for a little. So I've already worked the first row the first row doing exactly what I'm going to do now with the exception of where the placement was. Um, again, this pattern is on my website and also pinned to the comment section on Facebook. All right, so you're going to work this lace stitch, which I'm about to show you, in every chain one stitch from the row below. I'll show you what I mean here. So this is a half double crochet in North America or a half treble if you're elsewhere, or in Europe at least. Okay, so we're gonna yarn over we're going to insert the hook in the chain one space, bring that loop through, yarn over again and pull through all three loops. Then we're going to chain one and we're going to repeat that exact same stitch in the exact same spot. Yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three loops. And you'll see that creates the little V with the open work. Now remember when I said a second ago that you're gonna work in that chain one space? That's the space that I had just created with, that I'm referencing. All right, I'm gonna show you one more time. So we're gonna repeat the HDC chain one HDC if you're in the States or North America, it's HTR if you're not. Um, and we're going to look for the next chain one space, which is right there. And we're gonna work the half double crochet or half trebled, chain one, yarn over, pull through, half double crochet. And I'm working with the Knitter's Pride Wave. I'm gonna do it one more time because I'm having fun. <laughs> wave crochet hooks, okay. So we're going to create half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. If you know anybody that you think would be interested in making a knitter crochet sachet, please share this video. It helps for people to find me if it is shared. Okay, and you're just gonna continue that. And that, you continue that every single row. I believe I did it for 13 rows. Again, that's in the pattern. And then you'll just fasten off. You'll make two of those. Now you could make one long rectangle, but I liked the seams to be, I like it to have a seam on both sides just so it seems symmetrical. But if you wanted to, you could just continue and do a long rectangle and then fold it in half. Okay, from there, you would just seam them together. Well, actually, for the crochet one, it doesn't need to be blocked. It really, it's sturdy enough of a stitch. So you would just seam three sides together using whatever sewing method that you enjoy. Now I'm going to flip it over and we're going to talk. Actually, we don't even need to flip it over. Let me just do it here. Okay, let's talk blocking. 
All right, so for the knit piece, you can see it really does need to be blocked. It's pretty significant, the size difference. So what I recommend doing is getting your blocking mats, and this is also by Knitter's Pride. It's a lace blocking mat. And then there's also these blockers that I really love. For those of you that watched the knit show, you saw me do a VIX tip on these, on uh, blocking lace, and I use these, and I really, really like them. So you're gonna lay out your piece, and then you just take these, and they're like little combs, and you can just push them into your piece. You're gonna get it situated. So it's nice. You don't want it, you don't want it to look super stretched. You just want the open weave to shine. And if it feels like it's not the orientation that you want, you can just shift them. And these actually come in a couple of different sizes. So if, if these were too big or didn't work, or if you were working on a piece that had um, picos or something that would need to be pulled, you can work with that. And then after I've used my knit blocking tools. I'm going to take a little a spray bottle and spray it down or since we're making well not or but and since we're making a, a sachet and if you're feeling fancy and I'm frankly I'm feeling very fancy today you can use rose water too as part of the blocking process and that'll add a little extra yum to it. So just any rose water that you that you have or that you make on yourself lavender water would work as well. Um, it's just a nice little bonus. Okay, and then you're going to just let that dry. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip over, and we are going to talk about how to make the inside. All right, so those are the covers. So you would let that dry, and um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. Give me a second. So you would go ahead and let that dry, and you would also block the back. The back, as I said a second ago, is... Uh, just stockinette stitch. So nothing to see there. All right, so let's talk about the center. Or excuse me, the little um, pouch in the center. All right, so all you want to do is you want to find some fabric that, again, this is great for fabric apps. This is a scrap project all the way around. It's also really fun to do with kids. It's a great intro to sewing. Like maybe they're not going to do the lace part, but they could definitely, if you're kind of trying to get them into sewing, this is a great project because all it is is you're going to cut out squares that are about the same size as your, um, your knit or crochet piece, but I would add another half inch. You don't need to add, you don't need to compensate for seam allowance as much as you would if you were sewing because of the give but a little bit. So then what you want to do with right sides together is, you know, just sew both sides, trim the sides. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can hand sew, totally fine. You could probably get away with fabric glue, but I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, to make your mixture. All you need is some rice. I have here. Let me see if I can show it to you. Spin this around. Maybe not. I need to invest in a new tripod. Okay, so you're going to take some rice and then you can either take some dried lavender or I have um, some chai tea mix and you can just mix that in. Another thing that you can do is Take some essential oils. And you would just put in, don't put in too much if you're using something strong, just a few drops and then mix it all together. And you'll get something that looks like this. Oh, I got a little crazy with the lavender oil just now. All right, so then you're going to just take your pouch and you can take a spoon or you can take a um, measuring cup if you have a little, one of those little candy scoops are perfect for this. And you would just fill it. Don't make it super full. You want it to be pliable, but 
fill it and then fold over the edges and then you'll just hand sew. You'll just hand sew the tops and then you'll slide them in to your knit or crochet piece and hand sew those. And that's really all there is to it. Now, if you do not enjoy the smells, if sachets are not your gig, don't abandon ship on this project because there's a couple other things that you can do here. Instead of filling it with your pouch with rice um, and whatever form of fragrance that you choose, you can also fill it with dried lentils or beans or even those little plastic pelts. And you could make these either bean bags for kids to play with, or if you're sewists, you can use them as pattern weights. They work as all of those. One more thing that you could do is you could fill them with polyfill stuffing or cotton batting and stuffing, and you could turn it into a pin cushion. And that's really all there is to it. Simple, fun, I love little projects like this. I also think that it's really lovely, even if you don't have a chance to make a, a larger gift for mom, if you put just a little bit of special, just a little tiny handmade knot in it, I think that that just enriches um, the entire day, to be honest with you. Okay, so that is that. Again, you can find the pattern at vickihowell.com, and also I have it pinned. Please share this project if you know anybody or any groups that might be interested, both knitting and crochet. Um, Again, I used Knitter's Pride and Knit Pro needles. I used the Symphony Dreams. You can also use the Zings. I used the Wave Crochet Hook and the Knit Blockers, which is going to breathe backwards because of the, the forward-facing camera. Um, and that's really all there is to it. So I did have a question post on the boards from Dora uh, quest that is unrelated to this project but related to knitting and crochet she wants to know recommendations for crocheting a lampshade she asked what weight of yarn how to make it so it's removable so you can wash it I have not actually um, made a removable lampshade before I have cover before I have made them non removable because I don't know that it's necessary I vacuum mine and then it doesn't matter um, if there's any weird shrinkage or anything. But I suppose that you could run some elastic. You could make a hem on either side and then run some baby elastic through if you wanted to be able to take it off and on. My biggest tip for making covers for lampshades is make sure that the lampshade that you get is the cylinder kind versus the conical kind if you don't want to deal with the math of increases or decreases to create that shape. As long as you make, make sure that you allow for a little bit of stretch or give. So I would not add, I would not add any inches to it or anything for seam allowance so that it'll stretch and feel, fit really snugly. You should be good. And then you can just vacuum it and you shouldn't have to worry about taking it off. All right, the last, the la oh, somebody else just suggested that you can make heat pads out of these. That's another great, see, so fun. And you can, of course, make, I, um, in a book that I wrote, Aware Knits, I made rectangle versions, and they were eye um, pillows also. They're really, I mean, you can do, you can do it all. It's pretty amazeballs. Okay, now the business. People, we were nominated for a People's Choice Tally Award for the Knit Show. And I would really, really, really appreciate if you would take some time to go over and vote. Um, I really want to make more seasons of the show and things like accolades like this really help with that. So I will post a link. Um, it's also already on my Facebook page, but I will post it in the show notes. So if you could take a moment to do that, spread the word, I'd really appreciate that. I believe that we have until the end of this week to get that done. I don't know. I think you can only vote once, but I appreciate all of you that have already voted um, and those of you who will now. We are only about a week away until the Yarn Yay knit box, knitting subscription boxes go out. I still have some left, not a ton to be honest with you, but I still have them left. So get thee to yarnyay.com or just go to vickihowell.com, click on Yarn Yay either way and get your subscription box. They will go out in time for Mother's Day too, so you can gift one to someone. In case you haven't been, haven't heard me speaking ad nauseum, 
This is just another way that I get to have sort of this like intimate community experience while you get treats. So every month, or you can choose one month or more, you get curated yarn for me um, in kind of bite-sized samples, enough to make a project that I've designed to go with it. That way you get to try more expensive yarns, but for a lesser amount than if you were to buy a hank yourself. If you love it, then go out to your local yarn store, ask them to carry the yarn. Maybe they already do and buy it there, support them. We're on this together. Uh, you'll also get a couple different like novelty treats and I'll feature a couple of small businesses and tell you about that. And you're a part of a private, uh, a private Facebook group, which as we get closer, I'm going to, um, I'm going to share interviews with some of the small business owners that are a part of it and we'll knit along together the project. So I'm going to be doing a unboxing of the very first one. I'll make sure and give you a spoiler alert so that if you wanna be surprised, you won't see it. I haven't gotten mine yet. As soon as I do, and it'll be this week, I'm going to be doing that. So um, it might be one of my evening ones. I might grab a glass of wine and unbox with you, but keep an eye open for that and please, if you know anybody that would be interested in a knitting subscription box, go to yarnier.com and forward that away to them. All right, I think that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for taking part of your Monday or a New Zealand Tuesday um, to spend with me. I love this community and I so appreciate you. Take a little time this week for yourself. It's so important, as my mom always says, to fill the well. Fill that creative well, with, even if it's just a couple of stitches or a picture or you know, just a little time for yourself. All right. Have a great rest of your week. Mwah.